Yeah, it's not it's potential. not potential. It's not potential not anymore. More. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just yeah. it's act. It's it's reality. It is it is factual now. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's so where are we going from here on this Magic School Bus Tour oh. of the CTW card? What are we doing? <laughs> All right, next uh, up we got the uh, Nerdport Network All-Star Scramble. Love. I'm in love with this entire match. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Nerdport Network, JP, mm-hmm. Ronnie, Chino, Diana, all of you. Um, what can I say? This is one of my favorite workers from New York City, one of my favorite wrestlers from upstate New York, and two of my favorite from New Jersey Mm -hmm. in a four-man, one-fall-to-a-finish scramble. Uh, From New Jersey, you've got Drake Chambers, Mm -hmm. who is one of the better flyers Mm -hmm. and an underrated technician. He's one of the better flyers out there today. People don't really talk about him. He's another guy that I look at and say, why isn't everyone using him? Yeah. Why isn't he more places? And... So I try to put him in situations where people can see, hey, uh, why is it everywhere? Right, exactly. So this is another one. Um, I don't need to sell you on Matt McIntosh. Right. I don't need to sell you on what Matt McIntosh can do. The accolades are there. They've been listed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, champion of multiple promotions. Bad Apple, he is as rock solid as they come. Mm-hmm. Uh, New York City, mm-hmm. uh, I think that in a lot of ways you can say maybe 2015 belonged to or was like the come up of Rude Boy Riley. Mm -hmm. And 2016 has been like Boy Riley and a year of some other people, Cam Zagami for other reasons. Mm -hmm. I get this feeling that 2017 is the year of Anthony Kangone. Right. I I get the Mm -hmm. feeling that we're on the edge of something with Kangone. Mm -hmm. He is as talented as he is nice, genuinely yes. nice. I know he would be saying that on the radio, but I don't yes. care. Yes, he was um, tomorrow a little bit. Don't get me in trouble. I have to see him on Saturday. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> he is in that category of just super, super smooth in the ring, and he's mm-hmm. got something special about him. And he had to be on this show. He had to, had to, had to, had to. Right. Um, and... From upstate New York, Jay Freddy. And mm-hmm. if you don't know who Jay Freddy is, uh, hit the YouTube kids, mm-hmm. spend an hour or two, and learn who Jay Freddy is. He completed a six month tour of Japan last mm-hmm. year for the Wrestle One promotion. Nice. He worked a bunch of guys that you've certainly heard of mm-hmm. in Japan. Uh, he was involved with one of the last series of matches with. Brian Tangelson, before he went off and did what he did in WWE, he is uh, he's another guy that I just think is criminally underrated that more people should know. So this is kind of a match of, hey, people, uh, look at some awesome people and then, fi- and then ask your local promotion why they're not on your show, mm-hmm. because they should be. Yeah, so absolutely. I love this match. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't disagree. It's funny, Jay Freddy. Like I, I've heard of everyone else. Jay Freddy, I've never ever seen before, but I've heard of him because of just yep. uh, the word of mouth about how talented this guy is has just spread. And I've never even seen him. I'm excited to see him. Um, but just can, this he, is a lot. Yeah, he can fly. Mm-hmm. He can grapple. He can mm-hmm. tap you out. He is a pleasure to watch. He is super smooth. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Der- Chambers, I have to agree with you on. It's it's the same thing. Like, why isn't he everywhere? Uh, he's just so much mm-hmm. potential. Uh, Matt McIntosh is just, again, another guy that, you know, everybody knows who he is because his accolades speak for themselves. His, his accomplishments, his talent speaks for itself. And Anthony Gangone, I have to agree with you on. I think that if he has that one match that kind of, like, propels him to the next level, That's and I it. expect we'll, we'll see that sometime probably this year. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like sometime between now and the end of 2016, Mm-hmm. There's going to be that one gang going match where people go, oh poop! Yeah, this guy is the this guy is the stuff. Absolutely, and hopefully it's this one. Yeah, you know this might you be know? this might be it based on on this who's might be it. on and this might be it. Um, yeah. So you know that'll be great. Now we talked a little bit about Brandon Kirk. Um, he's going to be with his partner Jeff Cannonball, uh, the Rose, mm-hmm. uh, and they're taking on Flawless and Lawless, which is Blake Morris and Rex Lawless. 
So these are guys that you've heard of from a bunch of different places. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you've heard of the Rogues from UWA Elite right. or from Game Changer Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you've heard of Jeff Cannonball from CCW and Dojo Wars and the most recent Tournament of Death and from On Point Wrestling. Right. Uh, Brandon Kirk also not, uh, carving out a singles niche for himself mm-hmm. in several places. Uh, Blake Morris and Rex Lawless out from Long Island, mainstays of NYWC. Blake Morris has been champion there. Mm-hmm. Rex Lawless, you've seen him as the pectoral Poseidon mm-hmm. in CCW. And together as Lawless and Lawless, they have been NYWC tag team champions. Uh, these are two teams that function as well as teams as they do as singles competitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I kind of booked I, I put this match together right. for that dichotomy of talent in that these, these are legitimate, four legitimate singles wrestlers mm-hmm. that are also two legitimate tag teams. Because a lot of times you put tag teams together mm-hmm. and they don't gel, or you get two really talented guys in a tag team that can't hack it in singles. Right. These four guys can do whatever you need them to do. Mm-hmm. And... There's a lot of interesting stuff going on with this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, legitimately, it turns out that Brandon Kirk may or may not have a fear of Rex Wallace. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Cannonball uh, really is very jealous of Blake Morris's hair. Mm, it is nice hair. I have seen it. It is, yeah. it is very nice. I mean, I feel like everybody should be jealous of Blake Morris's hair mm-hmm. on some level. It is, it is luxurious. He obviously pantines and or herbal essences. I don't know what. I'll say pantine but... based on that shine. It's got to be pantine. <laughs> uh, based on the shine alone, it's, it's pantine for sure. But I have, a, I, I have connections to these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Jeff Cannonball. Mm-hmm. Brandon Kirk is one of the closest people to me mm-hmm. in this business and has been just a ton of help in putting the show together. Mm -hmm. And Blake Morris, true fact, Mm -hmm. was the first person that I ever approached and booked on a CTW show for last year's Fight Cystic Fibrosis. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, so I I think the world of all four of these guys, Mm -hmm. and I'm actually much more excited about this match than maybe people would think at this point. Mm -hmm. I think it's got the chance to really, uh, really shine in its own element. It's going to be completely different than every other match on the show, and that is the first ingredient that you need for a show stealer. It is mm-hmm. something that stands out as completely separate and individual. They may go funny, they may go violent, they may just have a straight up wrestling match. We will wait and see. Yeah, they, <laughs> they could do it. They could do it all. So it's, it's yeah. like I said, it's going to be exciting to see which which way they go and and how that match unfurls as it as it goes on. Yes. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, too, uh, women's uh, wrestling action, which I'm excited to see some women's action on there. Uh, huh. Yeah, Tara Calloway, who is just legitimately scary, uh, and is taking she's on. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then she's taking on Angel Orsini, who is an ECW original, who just recently, I think, beginning of the year, kind of came back into wrestling uh, and has yep. been all over the place. Yes, she has, and this is a Damage Three Sixty Five. Network spotlight match. So mm-hmm. thank you to Kevin and the crew mm-hmm. over at Damage 365. Mm-hmm. Tara Calloway, the pterodactyl transplant from Las Vegas, bringing her own brand of violence over here to the East Coast. Uh, I love the fact that she can get violent and she can just uh, outwork you. Mm-hmm. You know, I think she is one of these people who, because she is intimidating, because she is strong. Uh, the fact that she's good at what she does gets overlooked sometimes because right. sometimes you look at women's wrestling and you have a big, imposing female figure mm-hmm. and you say, oh, well, she's just a big girl. She's going to throw them around. And you forget the fact that they actually are very talented. Right. And so Tara is, is one of my favorite uh, competitors on the women's scene mm-hmm. right now. And Angel Orsini, for those of you who remember original ECW, who would stay up till 2 a.m. to watch mm-hmm. it on cable, you know, mm-hmm. was the Prada Jet yeah. in ECW. You absolutely know who she is. Just take a look at her face and your memories will come flooding back. Right. And she hasn't lost a beat. She really hasn't. And mm-hmm. it is going to be a pleasure to have, you know, in, for a company that last year I had just incredible and Rhino on the show. Nice. And Kiko Santana, who was not so much Extreme Championship, but East 
Western Championships yes. and with Jimmy Snuka. Mm-hmm. A lot of ECW ties here with CTW, and it's going to be a, a pleasure to have a full-fledged, legitimate, and talented ECW original like Angel Orsini on this show. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. It's going to be a really well wrestled, you know, match. There's a lot of uh, yes. so many talented women's westlers out there, and these are just two of them, and it's it's they're just going to be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It's great here for women's wrestling in general. Whether you're talking WWE or whether you're talking independent wrestling, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love the women's divi- the women's wrestlers coming out of places like Dojo Wars. Mm-hmm. It's just it's a wonderful time to be a fan of women's wrestling because the caliber of performance and performers is so Mm -hmm. high. And Tara versus Angel Orsini will be every bit of that. I'm very excited for it. Absolutely. It's going to be great. So now we're going to wrap this up, but you promised promised teasers. So... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will give you right now, uh, UWA Elite has a spotlight match, which Mm -hmm. has yet to be determined. Okay. Uh, but as of this moment, I can tell you that one of the competitors in the UWA Elite Spotlight match mm-hmm. confirmed is UWA Elite's current I champion, Joey Adams. Nice. Yeah, so I'm very thrilled. Um, again, people from Funkenstein, mm-hmm. Dan and Heather know Joey Adams like Joey Adams. I like Joey Adams. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's gifted in the ring. Okay. And again, just another guy who needs an opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity in front of some new fans to maybe get some new exposure. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the two things that I try to accomplish with CTW is mm-hmm. one, to put an emphasis and a spotlight on it on a worthy charity and to raise as much money as mm-hmm. we possibly can. And two, is to put on a good show while utilizing guys who are very talented who maybe aren't getting all the love that they deserve. Right. So I want people to leave my shows and CTW shows saying, I'm so glad we raised all this money for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And, oh, man, did you see Drake? Do you remember Drake Chambers? Mm-hmm. Or do you remember Joey Adams? Or do you remember Anthony Gangone or Jay Freddy or, or Blake Morris or whoever you've seen for the first time? Right. And those are the goals. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like in terms of wrestling, there is, there, if you're not doing your job if you're not furthering. It's one thing. You can go get a bunch of guys that people have already heard of. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you're going to be successful. Right. But you all, then 10 years from now, when all those people are done wrestling or they've right. moved on or they've gotten signed, who's left? And what have you done to keep this business cultivated right. and strong and growing? So that's why from a legend like Homicide to a relative rookie like Kid Christian. I try to spread the cap and really just kind of get a little bit of everything in there. And I learned that from people who are way smarter in this business than I am. You know, uh, from people who are legitimately just, I would not be here were it not for them. Be it somebody like Dave Swan in UWA, be it, you know, people in charge of GCW or rest in peace, Frank I. Devaya in, in Jersey All Pro Wrestling, um, to, you know, occasional conversations I'll have with Matt Tremont or, or Loudy or DJ Hyde, just people mm-hmm. who have been doing this forever mm-hmm. and who will always be five steps smarter than I am. So I'm one of these guys that really, it, I, I don't do this to really kiss ass right. from the language. But I, I have to understand, and everybody has to understand, that were it not for Fat Frank, were it not for James Wan, were it not for DK Hyde, were it not for Drew Cordero, mm-hmm. were it not for whoever, I'm not here. Right. And we're not doing this. So in order to properly talk about, you know, raising money for a worthy charity and putting on a good show with all these talented people. I have to talk about those people. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Every single one of those people you mentioned uh, are just absolutely amazing, Um, you know, in terms of (laughs) what they know and their thoughts and and they're willing to to share those with with people, which I think is absolutely great. Um, You know, 
Uh, I mean, even the first time I was at uh, CZW, I mean, it might surprise people, but I learned a lot from DJ Hyde, just kind of talking to him for a few minutes. Um, yeah. You know, he just willingly, like, you know, shared stuff and, and explained things to me that I didn't know about or I'd never heard of or whatever. And uh, yep. it was really amazing. And, I mean, you know, I, there's very few people I have more respect for than Matt Draymond in general. Um, and yeah. Loudy, again, same thing. Um, just, again, for so sure. respect. I mean, I, I have one mantra. 